Uh, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Farmer Ben here once again, uh, doing another video about a different subject today. Uh, my subject today being on behalf of the beautiful, exquisite and talented Kim Moule, who has is uh, my first subscriber, so she obviously has exquisite taste. Um, she has asked me to uh, give her a bit of advice on how to beat the tank that we see here in the middle of this lineup, Mr. Agir. Here he is, the nasty, nasty Aegir himself. Uh, I will look a bit more closely at him in a moment. Now, um, where to begin? Where to begin? Well, let's start off with the most simple thing. Uh, Aegir is not a nice tank to fight against. If you are fighting against him, you are probably looking at teams mainly in the sort of diamond range. He's pretty pretty tough. He's a hero of the month. I can't quite remember which hero, which month it was, but he's a formidable character. And I must admit, normally if I see him, I just tend to go off and raid somebody else. But uh, because I am going to be trying to sort of make a bit of a demonstration, I'm going to hopefully uh, take him on and see how we go today. Uh, now you can see already their team power, 4243. They are a formidable team that HFTZ has uh, managed to get together here. Um, so let's have a quick look at Aegir. Now Aegir is a very nasty tank. So he has all allies share receive damage with each other for three turns. So called Icy Resilience, but it's basically the same as the Spirit Link that Gnar and uh, Kehlani, the three stars, do, and also Wilbur, the four star. Uh, by sharing damage amongst all the, uh, the by all uh, allies, it means that there is a much, much smaller chance, um, a much, much smaller chance of an individual hero dying. So it helps to spread the damage and keeps them alive. All allies get plus 30% defense for three turns um so that's pretty good in and of itself but also all alloys heal 100 percent of dealt normal damage for three turns so effectively your normal attacks just don't do a thing uh which is not good so you don't really want that uh it recovers four percent health for all all ice allies for six turns and this effect can't be dispelled well on top of the 100 percent for normal damage you can see why he's pretty formidable often once he's gone off that that's kind of it you you are out it is game over so there are two really mainly two ways i would suggest you can uh you can take on a hero like uh, like Mr. Agir here. It's worth saying as well, let's just quickly look at his card again. It's worth saying as well, Agir, he wasn't a bad kid. You know, he grew up, he, he, he lived on a rough estate. He got in with the wrong crowd. Um, if you get in with the wrong crowd, you mess around. Unfortunately, you know, he, he ended up doing all kinds of, uh, all kinds of silly things, but a few drugs, which he shouldn't have done. He shot himself up with a lot of needles. So you can still see some of them in his back. Uh, overdosed. And sadly, you know, that sadly, that's how he ended up being raised as like a corpse warrior. Um, which, yeah, you, you know, you, you can't predict it. He was a lovely kid. Uh, you know, he looked out for his mum when he was at school, but then his mum had issues as well, I guess. So we can't we can't always uh, judge these things too closely. Anyway, so for my team, um, I am going to go, firstly, I'm going to go for the, the quick kill approach. Now, it is very, very dependent on a good screen, this one. Uh, it's not entirely reliable for a hero like a gear, because if it goes wrong, uh, you are in uh, generally a world of pain. So I will go with uh, three greens. And I will go with Gadarus because he boosts attack. I will go, so I have Kirill uh, to boost my attacks. Gadarius to boost them a little bit further if needs be and also keep the three central greens alive. Uh, Domitia just as a general sniper, Liana as a sniper and Elkanon just because I want as many strong greens as I can. So it's going for strong greens, it's going for speed of hit and trying to finish him off very, very, very quickly. So let's see how we go. Okay, so here is our team. Let's see how we get on. Going on into the mission. Okay. Let's see. So this is going to be a bit of a tricky start. But let's go for the three in a row green. You see the green tiles do quite a lot of damage to a gear straight off the bat there. Um, it may not be enough. You can see I've done roughly half the damage that I need to do to finish him off. This goes off again. Can we get... So you can see immediately the downside of this approach. Uh, there we are. So now he's done his spirit link. So now all of my damage is going to be spread. 
which is really, really bad news. So if I do this now, you'll see that my tiles go into a gear, uh, but they're healing them pretty much basically as soon as I'm, uh, as I'm doing them. So that's not going to do me much good. Um, it means that, yeah, essentially, I, I've almost already lost this raid before it's even started, uh, more or less, because now I cannot compete against him. You can see why he is such a horrible hero to fight, uh, such a horrible tank to deal with. So here he goes. Oh, he's going to go off again. Boom. So I might hit him again because I can, but his shield and his health are up. So he's healing himself even as he's going. Now, that's a good little combo, but you can see, oh, off he goes again. Bom, 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 bom. So he's very, very dangerous. Now, then I've got uh, herself gone off on a tell. That's not good either. Now, I will kill him here, because what I will do... Uh, now, I didn't mention that Domitia here has got a spill. Uh, uh, it reads, if you read her skills, it says, Dispels buffs from the target and nearby enemies. Well, his spirit link thing, that little uh, red, green, and blue dots that are all linked together in a circle, that is one of the buffs, along with the shields raised and the health reboost uh, that he has going on there. Oh, sorry, he steals health when he does damage. Sorry, I shouldn't have got that wrong. I misread that earlier rather than taking it. So he's got all of those things, but they will disappear when I do this. So if I fire her off first, boom, suddenly his special is gone. Um, and you can see now he's looking a bit more vulnerable. So if I go with Elkanen, I'm just going to fire off just slightly to the side because I know that Liana can finish him off or will be able to finish him off after this. And then Liana gets in the finishing shot. So Domitia has done the important debuffing work, making sure that he is no longer as much of a threat to me as he was. Uh, he's still done a lot of damage. He's really slowed the start of my raid off. Um, it's still not looking like a very promising raid in a lot of ways. Uh, on a tail now, stealing my mana as well. Uh, oh, here we go. S little slashy man. I can't think of his name. Ah, oh, no, that's really annoying because I could have done with him just staying alive that little bit longer. Uh, might finish off on a tail if I have a bit of luck here. Can it? No, not today. Not today. So Onatel is uh, annoying because she's now stealing my mana. Uh, you can see that I've managed to kill uh, Aegir, but it's not exactly a convince. It's not very convincing. It's still unlikely I'm going to win the raid overall. Um, I suspect now that things are just going to be. Oh, that wasn't the move I intended to make. Never mind. So you can see that he can be killed, but it just takes a lot of time. So that was kind of a mixture of methods one and two, um, because it was method one insofar as I took some powerful heroes and they were all green and I just went, men went crazy at him. In the other sense, it was part of method two, which is to use a debuffer. So we will now sort of demonstrate method two in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to hit rematch. I'm only going to fight this guy three times. Well, I can only fight him three times. So for the debuffing approach, what I will do is I swap... Uh, oh, no, I don't want to make them my defence team. Go away. No, you're not my defence team. That's my defence team. Um, so don't make the mistake I just made. It's a really good way to lose loads of heroes very, very quickly. Uh, loads of hit trophies, sorry, very, very quickly. So I will swap in an extra debuffer or two. Now, debuffers, there are quite a few of them out there. Um, so the one I am going to swap in is Melendor here. So if you go with Melendor, if you click on uh, Melendor's little question mark, you'll see that he dispels buffs from all enemies. Oh, he, here we are, recovers 42% health for all allies, dispels buffs from all enemies. So Melendor will remove the buffs. And I'm also going to get rid of Kirill because I've now taken on a new healer. It means I don't have a booster, which is annoying, but... It's a risk to take. And I'm going to swap in Sonia. Now, Sonia uh, is another uh, debuffer. She's a quick sniping debuffer. So, uh, mana speed is fast, which is good. Deals 345% damage to the target. Dispels buffs from all enemies. Uh, Cademon does a similar thing. So, uh, you can do Cademon or Sonia, Melendor or Sabina. They're basically the same, just in different colours. Um, here we go. Now, I'm still going with three greens. It is a risk, again. Um, I could, what else could I do? Well, I'm just going to go with three greens and see how this goes. Uh, you'll see my attack, def my strength is lower, but hopefully it will make a difference. I can uh, debuff him more quickly because last time I wasn't able to debuff him for ages. So I've also got a slightly better screen to start off with in terms of greens, which is nice. 
Uh, it may not be enough still, but who knows? Let's see how we get on. Oh, yeah. So we now, so this one actually, the one we are going to demonstrate the debuffing is going to be the one where I demonstrate the killing him quickly. So there we are, slammed loads and loads of green tiles into him, and he is gone. Um, the one where I was going to demonstrate the killing him quickly using power didn't turn out that way. Uh, but it's worth taking, uh, you can sort of see from this, the importance of taking debuffers. Uh, debuffers really can make quite a lot of difference to your attacks, uh, or more accurately, to making sure the enemy doesn't get their ultra-powerful attacks in on you. Uh, you control whether their heroes are stronger or not. Um, now this, again, uh, debuffering will work quite nicely here. You can see that this young lion lady, uh, Zimkitha, whose name eluded me for a second there, you can see she's now raised, uh, put a new buff on, which has raised everybody's uh, attack. Well, I don't particularly want everybody having a bonus attack, because it will make them stronger and do more damage to my heroes. So when I de use Melendor, not only does he heal my heroes, he removes those buffs from the opponents. So now they've lost their special little attack thing. Uh, this guy, he still does enough damage, goodness knows how tough he is, but he does do a lot of damage, um, Mr... I forgot his name, so I'm having... Um, I, didn't I may have pronounced that wrong, I do apologise there if I did. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so he... Um, he is still formidable, uh, and there are lots of formidable enemies, but by removing their buffs, you can then have a bit more control on the screen. So it's not Really, this is generally a more effective method, one where you are not reliant quite so much on the screen to begin with. Uh, you've got a bit more versatility because you've got the debuffers to deal with um, whatever they, well, hopefully, most of what they can throw at you. Um, annoyingly, she's not dying. She's just hanging on there, Zimkeef. Ah, there we go. So this one is looking much more likely it's going to be a win. The the two raids, um, two different raids with two different outcomes, um, not really what I expected from either raid, uh, in in truth. But uh, they kind of both sort of emphasise the point. The first one I was using Domitia to debuff, and that uh, you could see worked, um, but because I only had one debuffer and she was in purple, it took a long time for her skill to get ready. And the greens weren't quick enough to finish uh, a gear before he had a chance to hit me, uh, or his free special to go off, sorry, I should say. Whereas the second raid, uh, which was meant to be the one where I was demonstrating the debuffers with three debuffers, um, in fact, my board was more generous, gave me enough tiles to kill a gear before he went off, and therefore to win the raid. And it gave me a little bit of a head start. I did a was able to then use the debuffers to remove... Zim Keith's special skill. So debuffers can be really good. Uh, it just helps to keep your guys alive. You need to look a little bit at the enemy teams as to whether you want a debuffer or not. Sometimes you don't need them. Uh, certain heroes are not much of an advantage. Like if you're facing like Aslar as a tank, for example, he doesn't put a buff up. Uh, he just sets your guys on fire. So debuffer's no good. You want a status ailment remover like Rigard. Uh, those are the two. So a debuffer removes things which make your enemies stronger. A status ailment remover removes things which make your heroes weaker. Um, the only one of those I have is Rigard, and I haven't actually managed to fully ascend my Rigard, so I can't really demonstrate him. I've not had him all that long. Anyway, there we go. So I hope this was of a little bit of help. Um, as always, I'm sorry it was slightly rambling. I do tend to ramble, and I know that, so I do apologise. But uh, anyway, I do hope that it is of some help. Remember to press like and subscribe and ring the bell and all those things. If uh, anybody else or uh, the beautiful, talented Kim Moulet, uh, have any other questions, then by all means, please do uh, ask them either uh, via YouTube uh, or if you're in my alliance or around me, then you know other ways to contact me. Uh, but just ask any questions, any things you are having any sort of difficulty with, and I'll help if I can. Uh, this is my second video about sort of a specific enemy boss. Uh, the second, the first one having been on um, Atomos. So, you know, there, there's different tactics for different heroes. There's no often no one right or wrong way of doing these things. You need to consider the balance of colours the balance of special skills and the balance of strength in your own team against the special skills and balances of your opponent. Um, yeah. Really, I, I would advocate if you have the time and inclination and energy, the best way to do raids is to change your raid team to, for every team you face to 
make sure that you have got the strongest possible sort of connection of special skills and colors um, most people don't do that because it's very time consuming and i certainly don't do it but in theory that is the way to to sort of give yourself the best chance of winning as many raids as you can anyway i hope this was of some use to everyone uh, apologies if it wasn't but then you get what you pay for that's what i always say so anyway peace out take care farmer ben signing off may death come swiftly